Welcome to this video overview of using the dashboard InsureTax. In this tutorial, we will cover the first items you'll see in InsureTax to help you confidently navigate the program. After logging into InsureTax, you will find yourself on the dashboard. Here, you can select a business to work with under the Walters Clue or logo. You will then see information specific to that business on the dashboard. Having already selected our business, let's look at the icons at the top of the screen. The first icon is Add. Clicking it gives you a drop-down list from which you can select which type of item to add. For example, let's see what it looks like to add a new SKU. Selecting SKU opens the Add a SKU dialog. Here we can see the required and optional fields that you would fill out while adding a SKU. After completing them you would click the checkmark to save, but for now we'll click the X to cancel and close the dialog. Let's look at another. How about adding a location? Here again, we can see the required and optional fields you would fill out, this time in the Add a Location dialog. The next icon we'll look at is Search. This takes us to the search screen. I'm going to try searching for a transaction using Invoice ID. The search result displays here. We can see details about the transaction that I searched for, such as its total revenue and status. The next icon is Notifications. I can see that there is currently one active notification, so let's see what it is. The notification is to tell me that my import of a SKU spreadsheet, earlier today, was successful. I can click View Summary for more information, or dismiss the notification, but for now I'll just close the dialog so we can look at the next icon. The next and last icon is My Profile. The profile icon allows you to add personal information, regulate your account, and get help if you need it. For example, you can choose on-screen guides to open a short guided tour of SureTax. This brief tour is presented to you when you first start using SureTax, but you can also access it later, whenever you want, from the profile drop-down. From the profile icon, you can also select to create a ticket on the support site. Do this by selecting CCH Support, and then submit a ticket. Selecting this option opens the support site in a new window, where you can log in to create your support ticket. You'll be taken directly to the support case page where you can proceed with entering the details for your ticket. Now, let's return to the dashboard. Another place you can go from the profile icon dropdown is the collection of help files for SureTax, which also opens in its own window and can be very handy if you ever feel stuck. But for now let's look at the information cards at the top of the dashboard. Each card tells you at the top how recently it was updated, and each contains basic information at a glance with the option to drill down and see more details. The added this month card tells you how many SKUs, Nexus, and locations were added this month, with the option to view the monthly summaries going back 12 months. The card titled this month's line items tells you how many unfinalized, finalized, and total line items you have for this month, with the option to view monthly line item totals. The Exemption Certificate Warnings card tells you how many exemption certificates have expired, how many have fewer than 30 days until expiration, and how many there are total, with the option to view the customers. And the final card tells you how much total revenue you have for this month, as well as the total in taxes and fees, with an option to see all of this month's transactions. Now let's look at the centerpiece of the dashboard, the map. The map can be toggled between the United States and Canada. Locations is first on the list of map views, so it's selected by default. The locations map shows you the number of active locations by state. We can see more specific information below the map. In the map details section, we can see cards, displaying more information for each individual item of those that display in the map above. There are multiple ways to organize this information. The group by options allow you to see cards by common factors location type, state, county, city, or geo code. Currently the chosen filter is none, which means no grouping method has been applied. You can also use the jump to feature, to focus on the information for a specific state. I jump to California, so here I can see that California has a single location and it's a store in orange. Also in this view, I can select the location in order to edit or delete it. Let's have a look at how that works. Clicking the location opens an edit location dialog, similar to the add dialog that we saw at the beginning of the video using the add icon. Here, I can edit various fields for the selected location, or I could delete the location by clicking the trash button. 
For now though, I will just close the dialog. This returns us to the detail view for California. Clicking the back button takes us back to the details view for the entire map. The next map we can view is the news items map. The news map shows which states have news items and whether they're red or unread for a specific date range which you can select. Right now our map is full of unread news items. You can see that the map details section has changed and is customized for this specific map. The jump to option is still present. But let me show you a different way to focus on a state's details. This time, let's jump to a state by clicking on that state in the map itself. We can see that the map details section has focused on Kansas and can view its 8 news items. Now let's look at the Nexus map. In this case, the map colors indicate the number of jurisdictions active in each state. Orange, green, or gray, to show all, one or more, or no jurisdictions active respectively. Also the colors blue and purple display how close a state is to nearing its economic thresholds. When the economic thresholds have been reached for a state, it will be necessary to register there and add an active nexus. So we see for example that Texas has all jurisdictions active. The detail view confirms that all authorities are active. Let's try another state. New Mexico has three active jurisdictions according to this map. The map details section has narrowed to New Mexico and shows that the three jurisdictions are the FCC, the IRS, and the state of New Mexico. Clicking manage all nexus here by the way would take us to the nexus screen where more configuration can be done. As you might have noticed when looking at the edit dialog for California locations, there are multiple places where you can add, edit, and delete items in SureTax. That's by design, so that you can create a workflow that's best for you. The SKUs map is next. The SKUs map shows whether there are no active SKUs, one or more active SKUs, or all SKUs are active. In this case, we have all SKUs active in each state, and the state cards in the map details section show how many each state has. Lastly, let's take a look at the transactions map. The transactions map shows you which states have zero or negative revenue, which states have positive revenue, and which states have no revenue. You can filter the results that display by date range, total revenue, and total tax. In this case, the map details section shows us the three states that have positive revenue from transactions, and how much revenue they have, as well as total taxes and total fees, if any. This concludes the dashboard overview video tutorial. I hope that you now feel more acquainted with the SureTax dashboard and how to navigate around in it. Thanks for watching our video on using the dashboard in CCH SureTax.